Bish, what's the biggest issue on this team right now? I, it's an organizational issue. This team just does not assess value well. Yeah, They give out bad contracts in free agency that we justify because Parag Marate has 15 outs uh, scheduled within the contract, so it doesn't ultimately hurt the cap in the long run, and then those players aren't part of the team long term. Let's, let's give the examples. Quan Alexander. One year of Quan Alexander. Four years, $60 million. Jarek McKinnon. Weston Richburg. Um, D4, they gave a second round pick for, and I, I'm not someone who's criticized that move because I think D4 is that good of a player, but it's a misassessment of a guy who has been managing major back injuries and major knee injury issues his entire career. That was a problem. And they, D4 has made a lot of money in a short amount of time for not being able to play because of these same injuries. I mean, you go down the list and drafting value issues. It, was there a reason to trade up for Dante Pettison specifically? Was he a generational con, uh, receiver prospect that made you need to get him as opposed to just drafting DJ Chark, who would have been available where you would have been picking? Or Same was there with Ayuk. Same with Ayuk. Brandon Same Ayuk, with Ayuk. Yeah. Right? Was there a need to trade up for CJ Beathard? Was there a need to trade Hold up on, for... Hold on, real quick. I, I don't have the list, but it. every single player they've traded up for so far, did you have to do that? Trey Lance might work out, but... Joe Williams, C.J. Beathard. I mean, Trey Sermon. I mean, the Trey Sermon one, I, I, I know the best because I, I did spend Foster. a lot of time evaluating this draft top to bottom. Yeah. And um, you could not have paid me money and convinced me that Trey Sermon was a better running back prospect than Michael Carter, who went in the fourth round. So I do not understand why you needed to trade up right. for Trey Sermon. Maybe you wanted to run a different style of offense, the style of offense that Kyle was drawing up. Uh, with Justin Fields. Uh, oh, oh right. wait. From Justin Fields' pro day, he was drawing it up for Trey Lance. But what style offense did Trey Sermon play in college with Justin Fields, Grant? Spread, zone read, college style. Yeah. None yeah. of this makes sense, Grant. None of it, None makes, of it sense. makes sense. They don't yeah. assess value properly. They're not run by a team. They're not run like a team that understands value. I mean, Kyle Shanahan's out here. Oh, I saw the uh, Rams give up two first-round picks for a corner. Yeah, a corner who was a two-time All-Pro and was going to walk in to the seat. Yeah. The Los Angeles Lambs rock room as a top-two corner in football. Oh, I saw the Seahawks give it up for Jamal Adams. Yeah. Jamal Adams was an all pro before they traded him. Right. You traded up a month before the draft for an unknown because you have not been able to figure out the quarterback situation for the last three years. Right. You've had reservations that have been reported by multiple people since 2018 about Jimmy Garoppolo. You flirted when you kicked the tires with Tom Brady. Oh, I, I don't think this is going to work. You kicked the tires with Stafford. Oh, I'm not sure this is going to work. Oh, the Watson situation. Oh, no, Watson is now, you know, he's got pending possible legal issues. Okay, fine. I like Trey Lance. I like Mac Jones. Let me just trade up to three a month before the draft, and we'll start studying them more and see if we fall in love with one of these guys. There is no plan on how this organization is going to get better. They don't have a plan on what they're going to do. And Kyle Shanahan, who's been um, using the media, basically as a shield by basically twisting different things that he's, even though he's been contradicting himself the last year, he's been using the media as the shield by saying that the media is misconstruing his words, putting words in his mouth, creating situations that don't exist, look like a guy that was out of answers yesterday when he was asked about these things because his plan was that he had no plan. They were trying to make it up as they go. And right now they need to reassess the situation. And the best thing they can do over the last 11 weeks of this season or 10 weeks of this season, it's pretty simple. You start Trey Lance when he's healthy. You try and create momentum into 2022 with Trey Lance, and you start moving veteran players, recouping assets, moving money around so that when you have to sign Nick Bosa, when you have to sign Debo Samuel, you can still rebuild this team in some sort of way, whether it's get better corners, get more help in your offensive line, especially given the interior offensive line. All three guys are probably gone in 2022 and all of that. And you can actually give Trey Lance a real roster to work on rather than you have Trey Lance on his rookie wage, but you're the Dallas Cowboys paying six different players. So you can't really take advantage of having a very talented quarterback on the rookie wage. Okay. Um, it seems to me that what you're saying uh, in, a, in a very long way is that Kyle Shanahan has too much power. We, uh, we said this earlier. He is the most powerful head coach in the league other than Bill Belichick. And he is running the front office and he's making these trade-ups and he's, as you're saying, not 
uh, he's not assessing value properly and not even coming close. So to me, what's concerning is if Jed York were to say, well, let's fire John Lynch and promote Adam Peters. Like that's just really giving, again, the second most powerful head coach in the league more power where I don't think that's necessarily the solution to this problem. One more thing, Ethan over here asked, what would it take for Parag to, to get the hot seat? Uh, I just think Who knows? I, Who I don't know exactly does. what he does, but it seems to me that he's he's they call him the executive vice president of football operations. And they say that he works alongside Lynch and Kyle. Kyle clearly has final say, but it seems to me that Parag's above John and to have their top guy be really more of a salary guy than a football guy is a problem. So maybe if Denise figures out, look, Parag's useful for us. But he can't, he's too powerful. He I'm not saying get like fire Parag, but there needs to be someone above him. There should be a football guy running the show above Kyle, above John, above Parag. And I don't know if that's ever going to happen because that doesn't really seem to be what the Yorks want to do. They don't really want to turn it over to like an outside consultant or whatever. They kind of want it to be an in-house production. That's what I think the biggest issue is here is that there's no football guy at the top really running the show. It's Kyle and John and Parag and the three of them. And they need, they need like a, a senior member here. I think. I yeah. Do. yeah. I, I don't know what the issue is. I personally don't think firing everybody this year is the issue just because I feel like it's a little bit of a situation where you've let Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch forfeit so many assets, make so many decisions, pay so many players so much money that you have to be honest with yourself and give this Trey Lance situation one year to play itself out. To me, that, that's games, where I still stand. I, that's where I still stand. But games. this season, the way it's trending and where it's going, it, it could get so ugly that, you know, other people might not hold the same view as me. And that might put real pressure on the Yorks to get rid of Kyle Shanahan, which I, I think after this year, in spite of me criticizing him endlessly because I am frustrated, uh, the challenge especially, challenging nothing, really, really put me over the edge. But no matter what, I, I still think you have to let one more year play out. We have to see Trey Lance play out a full season. 